Welcome to Google Drive, formerly known as Google Docs. This space is the modern home for where people keep their files now. But not only that, it's also the home for where people do work. If you're ever on Google Drive, you can see all the files you have. If you want to organize them a little better, you can create folders. But most importantly, you need to know that you can upload old documents, but you can also create new ones. Some of the different things you can create are a document. That's a lot like Microsoft Word. You can create a presentation, which is a lot like PowerPoint. You can create a spreadsheet, which is a lot like Excel. You can create a form, which is going to help you to create quizzes and, and surveys. You can use a drawing, which will let you draw, or you can make folders, and so much more. This is just a basic template because this is actually my school account. But today, me and my group members are going to practice with three of those. We're going to practice first with forms, then with spreadsheets, and finally with presentations. I hope you enjoy. Google Forms is a simple survey creator that lets the user create very simple to complex surveys that can be sent out via email and embedded into web pages to collect various types of data that can be reported out. A Google survey has seven different types of questions that can be used to collect information. Text and paragraph allow for written responses. Multiple choice allows for one designated answer. Checkbox and list enable multiple designated answers to be chosen. And scale and grid lets the user rate items. By clicking on add item, you can easily add as many questions as you would like in various formats. When collecting the results for the survey, all the submitted responses come to a Google spreadsheet. This allows you to easily view the responses, including when they were submitted. The results can then be downloaded, printed, shared, and organized to suit your needs. By clicking Show Summary of Responses, if possible, the results can be viewed in chart and graph format for a more visual representation. By making a page break, you can specifically collect information only from the people you want by using a previous question to direct them. This lets one survey serve several purposes and not flood recipients with multiple surveys all at once. Once a new page has been created, designations can be set to take survey takers to specific pages with specific questions depending on the answer. The use of surveys in the classroom goes as far as you want to take it. Surveys can be used to collect information from parents and students, give quick and easily recorded quizzes or assignments, even provide a device for students to create new things. Here we have a spreadsheet view of a survey given to collect information from student and parents. As you can see, all the entries are time stamped as to when they were taken. All the data is right there in front of you without clicking through individual results. By clicking on show summary of responses, if it's in, able to, you can see the results in chart form. And if we go to edit form, we can see the survey as it's been created. And if I want to, by clicking on the little pencil right here, I can then edit information, change questions, and if I have a page break, like I do here, I can then designate questions to take the user to different answers. By clicking here, we can see our end result, which is a polished survey that can collect multitudes of information. Hope you found this information useful and can find ways to use surveys in your own classroom. Google Spreadsheet is Google's version of Microsoft Excel. With spreadsheets, you can store information and use that information to manipulate and analyze data. You can also use built-in features to turn your data into a visual presentation. Creating a new spreadsheet is as easy as creating a new document for any of Google's products. The document can be customized with fonts, colors, and the number of columns and rows. Once you have created a document, there are many different ways that you can share it. You can share it directly to one person by sending them an email. You can share it using a link, which will also allow embedding. Or you can make your file public to anyone. 
You can also choose to share, but also limit control. When sharing, you have the option to allow or disallow editing. Google Spreadsheets can also automate calculations for you by using functions. This could be helpful for grading in school or for paperwork, but we'll get more to that later. One common use for Excel is to create graphs and charts, or visuals. Google also allows you to create these spreadsheets. You simply highlight the data that you want to represent, and then you choose Insert, and finally Chart. There are other things you can insert, including other files created on Google. There are many great ways you can use Google in the classroom. Some school districts rely on Google as a gradebook. I personally use Google Docs with all my students. We collaborate not only on a writing assignment, but also to share numerical data with one another. You can also use these built-in features to create graphs and present numerical information. Let me show you an example. In my sixth grade class, we do a lot of typing. One way that we store our typing document is through a Google spreadsheet. Every Friday, or if we don't have class that Friday, the previous Thursday, my students take a typing test. What they're doing is trying to see if they've made growth that week in their typing skills. When they're done, they come and they input four things. The date they took the test, their typing speed, the amount of errors, and their adjusted speed. Every week they put in that information so that they can build a larger table that shows their growth. At the bottom, they used a calculation. They highlighted all the information they wanted and made an average of those numbers. And they did that for all three categories. When they wanted to make a graph, they highlighted all the information that they could possibly be interested in, and they went to insert, and then they inserted a chart. You can see that my student has made a chart down below. Let's see. It's hard to see on there because my thing is covering it up. But this is what my student's chart looks like. And it shows the peaks and the valleys of all their scores. But generally speaking, we like it because it shows growth. I'm here to talk to you about Google Presentation. Google Presentation is Google's version of Microsoft PowerPoint. So like PowerPoint, it allows a user to create multi-slide presentations that include images, text, shapes, and videos. Unlike Microsoft PowerPoint, however, Google Presentation saves everything to the cloud online. So you're able to access your presentation from anywhere. All you need to do is log into your Gmail account, click on Create, and click on Presentation to get started. Some of the features of Google Presentation involve the ability to format your background, your layout, and your theme. After inserting a slide by clicking on the Slide Toolbar option and clicking Add Slide, the user can then format the theme, background, or layout with the same slide drop-down menu. The theme option gives the slides a distinct pattern, which includes different color lines, shadings, and other features that stay on all the slides of the presentation. To change the background, the user can do this to make the slide a solid color, or they can import an image so the image becomes the background of the slide. It has the option to change the slide individually, so each slide is different, or you can apply this background to all the slides, and all the slides will have the same background. After the background feature, the user has the ability to change the layout of each slide. So they can decide how they want the slide to look, if they want just a title, if they want a title and text, if they want a title, text, and image. The next thing that Google Presentation can do is have ins inserted images, text, and links, which is essential when you're creating this type of presentation. So images can be added by going to the Insert menu and choosing text box, image, link, or shapes depending on what one you're working with. Images have the option to be uploaded, that you can take a snapshot, or you can even directly put in a URL for that image. The user can also pull images directly off their drive folder, so anything saved on your drive can be easily put into your Google presentation. Text can be added simply by inserting a text box. Then you have the ability to change the font, the color, the size of the text. In order to add links, the user can enter a URL by going to the Insert and then clicking on the Links option, or they can go directly to the website, and they can also link the slide in from another presentation. So if you want to do, go back to a slide or link to another slide in a presentation, that Google presentation has the option to do that. Another really nice feature of Google presentation is the ability to add a YouTube video. The user has to go back to the Insert drop-down menu 
then they can select video and it gives them the option to paste in a YouTube URL or another URL from another site with a video. When you choose YouTube option, the video is embedded into the presentation. Unlike PowerPoint, which needs a special plugin to embed a YouTube video, Google Presentation does it automatically, and then the user is able to just click play on the actual slide, which makes for a seamless transition during presentations. This, this idea of Google Presentations is a great idea in the classroom. It's easy for the instructor to deliver information to the students. They can then embed this or put this presentation on some kind of um, wiki, Weebly, blog, anywhere that they want students to get the information from, and students can access it from anywhere. Another great feature about this is that students can work on projects and presentations collaboratively or individually, and then they can share their presentation with the teacher or the class. It also allows for collaboration between students or between the teacher and students, so students are able to work on a presentation, get some feedback. You can also set the feature so that it can be shared and people can edit, or it can be shared and people can just view it, so that if you don't want everyone able to edit your presentation, they can still have access to viewing it and getting some information. So there's just a little bit about Google Presentation.